Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback and let's get started. Now we have three circles, two of them, the green ones have radius A and the red one has radius B. And they're inscribed in a isosceles triangle uh, which uh, has a base of 10 and the other side lengths are 13 and 13. So let's start by making some connections. I'm going to go ahead and drop the height. Since this is isosceles uh, from symmetry, we should be getting something nice, right? It should go right through the middle. All right, and then we'll go ahead and connect these two centers here. Definitely that's going to help us, All right? And then we'll form a triangle here this way and that way. Okay, here we go. And then I'll drop the perpendiculars. Let me go ahead and drop a perpendicular this way. Okay. See? All right, I'll just connect those again. All right, and then I'll just drop one perpendicular here and one perpendicular here. Awesome. What else do I need? Um, I would probably want to connect these as well. And then these as well. Okay. Now we know that the radius of the smaller circle is A. So this is A, this is A, this is B, this is B, this is A, and this is A, and this is A, and everything here is A pretty much. Okay? A lot of A's. Cool. Now, I do know that the base of the triangle is 10, so half of that, since this is also a median, is going to be 5. So this is 5. Nice. I'm going to use that information in a little bit to find A, but I also need to make another connection here, which is super important. So that's going to be a, a angular bisector, isn't it? Okay, so this is alpha and alpha. Now, one thing to note here is that we do get two congruent right triangles. Awesome. And how does alpha help us? Well, I don't have any information on alpha, but I can find some information regarding 2 alpha because 2 alpha belongs to the big triangle and that's actually one of the base angles, which I can use because I know the lengths. So the hypotenuse here is 13, which means the height of this triangle is going to be 12 because this is kind of like a 5, 12, 13 triangle in other words, okay? We have a 5, 12, 13 triangle and multiply that by 2 because we have two of those. But pretty much we're going to work on one of the halves. So how can I find A from here? Well, I'm going to use trigonometry. Obviously, there's more than one way to do it, but I'd like to use trigonometry. Note that uh, we can find tangent to alpha, right? Tangent to alpha is going to be, and this, this is the triangle I'm using. Let me shade that for you. There we go. The tangent alpha can be found from tangent to alpha. I'm, I'll show that to, uh, in a little bit. But how do you find tangent to alpha? Well, the height is 12. Um, so the adjacent side is 5. The opposite side is 12. Tangent to alpha is equal to 12 over 5. Now, how do you find tangent alpha from tangent to alpha? That's what I'd like to use, right? Well, there's a formula for it. Tangent to alpha can be written as 2 tangent alpha divided by 1 minus tangent squared alpha. This is the double angle formula, right? From here, you're going to get a quadratic in tangent alpha, which is going to give you two solutions. But one of them is not going to be valid, obviously. But I'm going to do it differently because it's more fun that way. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw a right triangle with lengths 12 and 5. Those are legs. And the hypotenuse would be 13. Now, this is 2 alpha. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to extend the base, 13 units, and then connect these two points here, okay? Uh, it's not super straight, but you get the idea, hopefully. What am I getting here is that I'm getting an isosceles triangle, which is obtuse, right? Uh, that means that the, these angles are congruent, but we have more information. The exterior angle theorem tells us that these angles have to be alpha and alpha. Sweet. From here, I can find tangent alpha, basically, right? Super easy. It is 12 over 18. So tangent alpha is equal to, tangent alpha is equal to 12 over 18, which can be written as two thirds in the simplest form. Okay, going back to our picture, how does that help us? Well, 
let's call this length x. We don't know what it is, right? And we can go ahead and write down a relationship for tangent alpha. Since we do know tangent alpha, I can find x in terms of a, right? Tangent alpha in this triangle, this is what I'm talking about, is equal to a over x, right? So from here, a over x is equal to 2 over 3, and x can be written as 3a over 2. So I was basically able to write x in terms of a, which helps because now notice that this length is 5, so x plus a is equal to 5. x plus a is equal to 5, and x can be written as 3a over 2 plus a is equal to 5. Let's multiply everything by 2. 3a plus 2a is equal to 10, and from here 5a is equal to 10, which means a is equal to 2. Awesome. Now I know that a is equal to 2, so I'm halfway done because I was supposed to find a and b. I found a. And which means that uh, you can also find x because x is 3a over 2. And if you substitute that, you'll get that x is equal to 3. Nice. Or you could use this equation. It doesn't really matter. So now, I know a and x. I need to find b. And to find b, I'm going to use another right triangle here, right? How am I going to use that? Well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Well, you can or you cannot. I mean, you may or may not. doesn't really matter. But uh, that's one way to do it. And you can also do it this way, which I'll probably show you in a little bit. So this is B. Now, we know that B is greater than A slightly. I mean, it wasn't given, but you could probably tell. This figure is drawn to scale, by the way, somewhat, right? So what I can do is I can actually find this length here. Let's call that length Y. How am I going to find it? Well, if you draw a parallel line from this point to this point, you're going to get a right triangle there, a tiny, small right triangle, because A and B are so close, that's why our triangle is so tiny. But this is going to be Y as well. This length here, here this little piece is going to be B minus A. So what you can do is you can actually write the Pythagorean theorem. Y and B minus A are the legs, so it's going to look like this y squared minus b minus a squared is equal to the hypotenuse. And in this case, the hypotenuse is a plus b because the segment that connects the centers goes through the point of tangency. So that segment needs to be of length a plus b. So this is a plus b quantity squared. From here, I can basically find y in terms of a. Let's go ahead and expand it. Or if you remember our shortcut formula, we said that if you subtract these two expressions, you always get 4ab which is kind of nice, right? y squared is equal to 4ab. That means y is equal to um, 2 times the square root of ab, or you can just replace a with 2. This is going to give you 8b. Now, if you square root both sides, then you'll get y is equal to 2 times the square root of 2b. 2b or not 2b. Now I can make this joke, okay? I was waiting for this moment. Now, we were able to find y in terms of b. We know x, we know a. Let's see what we can do. So, since we know y in terms of b, you know, uh, but there's another length uh, here that I need to consider, and let's call that z, x, y, z, alphabetical order, right? Okay, this is also x, by the way, so that kind of lines up nicely. So, I know x numerically, x is equal to 3, right? And then I know y in terms of b, I think, right? Is that right? Okay, yep, y in terms of b. And then if I can find z somewhat in terms of b, then I'll be done, pretty much. How am I going to find z, though? Well, if you consider this triangle and this angle, let's call that angle beta, notice that 2 alpha and beta are complementary, which means that uh, we get two similar triangles, in other words, here, right? These two triangles are similar. This, this one and then the larger half. Cool. Uh, since they are similar, I get the idea that uh, the legs are in the ratio of 5 to 12. So if this is... 5, this should be 12. In other words, B to C ratio, B to Z, I'm sorry, B to Z ratio should be 5 to 12. From here, you get Z is equal to 12B over 5. Awesome. I was able to get Z in terms of B, Y in terms of B, and I do know X. But how am I going to put it all together? Well, this length here measures 13. You know that, right? Because it was given. So the sum of those three lengths is 13. If you subtract 3 from it, you'll get that these two add up to 10. In other words, y plus z is equal to 10. Isn't that awesome? y plus z is equal to 10. 
Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, we'll see what happens. Now we're going to go ahead and substitute these values here. Y can be written as 2 times the square root of 2B plus Z, which is 12B over 5, and the sum is equal to 10. One of the things I can do is I can actually go ahead and multiply everything by 5. So it's going to be 10 times the square root of 2B plus 12B is equal to 50. Now I'd like to isolate the radical, obviously, so that I can square both sides. So this is going to give me that. But before I do, let me go ahead and divide both sides by 2 because it's going to make things a little easier, you know. Numbers are kind of too large here, so let's make it a little smaller. Okay, nice. So what I'm going to do here is multiply, I mean divide. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, 25 minus 6b, and then I'd like to square both sides. Now, when you square both sides, what happens? Well, good things happen because you'll get rid of the radical, and hopefully you can solve for b from here. We already know a, so we're going to solve for b. Let's square both sides. 25 multiplied by 2b is equal to, okay, 625 minus, 6 times 25 is 150. If you double that, you get 300, right? b plus 36b squared. Okay, let's put everything on the right-hand side. 36b squared minus 300b minus 50, right, b, okay, is uh, plus 625 is equal to 0. Nice. Okay, uh, let's simplify this by combining like terms. This is going to, going to be negative 350b plus 625 is equal to 0. Unfortunately, at this point, there's no way to simplify this equation, but if you use the quadratic formula, we're going to be able to solve it and hopefully simplify from there. Okay, so b is equal to negative b. I mean, b and b are different here. You know the quadratic formula. Plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 36 times 625 all over 2a, which is 72. Nice. Now, hopefully this expression can be somewhat simplified, right? Well, here's one thing to notice. 350 definitely contains uh, 5 times 70, uh, which means 5 times 5 times 14. So 350 can be written as 25 times 14, correct? Okay, nice. Which means it contains a 25. When squared, it's going to contain a 625, which means I can factor out 625. Sweet. Okay. So now I'm going to be getting from here. I'll take out a 625, which is... Um, 25 squared. And uh, what do I have left? So uh, this was 25 squared times 14 squared, which is, you know, this guy squared here. So I took out a 625. So I should have inside 14 squared, which is 196. Awesome. Minus. I took out this one. So I have now 4 times 36, which is equal to 144. Beautiful. Such a small number to handle. Divide by 72. And then from here, I can get, um, let's see, the square root of 625 is 25, 196 minus 144 is equal to 52, and 52 is equal to, okay, let's do it in the next step, divided by 72, and then b is going to be what? Okay, 52 can be written as 4 times 13, so it's going to be square root uh, 2 times root 13, 2 multiplied by 25 is going to be 50, so to keep a long story short, you're going to get something like this. Great. Now we're going to divide everything by 2 and split up the solutions. 175 plus 25 root 13 over 36. This is going to be B1. And B2 is going to be 175 minus 25 root 13 over 36. Now this is going to be a very large number. It's not going to work. We reject it. And then you can think about why we reject it. And is there another way to check? This is going to be our valid solution. So that's the value of b, 175 minus 25 root 13 over 36. Unfortunately, that's not a very nice number, but it's a radical. And a is equal to 2. We found that before, so let me go ahead and copy that here. So we found the values of a and b, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Take care. Bye-bye.